From the much-loved Magnificent Century to the latest hit Gadaj, Turkish TV series are becoming more popular than ever. The country has become one of the top three exporters in the sector after the United States and Britain. But why have they become increasingly appealing to foreign audiences? Zeynep Gökçe reports. The Taylor, starring Çağatay Ulusoy, is a Turkish drama which was released in May last year. At first, it was supposed to air on a local TV channel, until streaming services wanted to snatch it up. In the end, Netflix managed to win the fight, as it also grabbed the global streaming rights for the show. And this is just one example of how the competition for Turkish dramas is heating up. The country has become the third biggest exporter of scripted series in the world. That's right after the US and Britain, says data firm Parrot Analytics. But what's all the fuss about? Well, The Economist says Turkish telenovelas are easy on the eyes, with their glamorous landscapes, luxurious costumes and handsome actors. A trend which started with Magnificent Century, one of the first Turkish series to go global after its release in 2011. The show follows Sultan Suleyman. It stirred controversy at the time for focusing on palace intrigues rather than his achievements. That's when Turkey's state broadcaster tried to set an example with Resurrection Ertuğrul, another historic hit featuring a real-life Turkic warrior. And its influence is just as intense today, even in Venezuela, where some youngsters have signed up for courses to learn the language. I saw Turkish TV series while my aunt was watching them, and I enjoy them very much. I want to learn Turkish. It will be useful for me. Turkish shows are not only popular in Latin America, but also in the Middle East and Europe. Last year, the three biggest importers of new Turkish series were Spain, Saudi Arabia and Egypt. As for export numbers, well, they've skyrocketed since 2008. And they include international Emmy winners such as Endless Love and Family Secrets. Siz şu anda baba ve abisiniz. While more daring, censor-free productions on streaming platforms are also noteworthy. From period drama The Club to the recent crime action series Gaddar, which translates to Ruthless. Yes, the obsession with Turkish dramas keeps spreading, but that's not the case in most English-speaking countries. Sure, rapper Cardi B is known to be a Magnificent Century fan, but it seems it will take time to break the ice in the US and UK. Then again, Turkey's state broadcaster is releasing a new show called Mehmet, Sultan of Conquests. And if he can't conquer the world, who else can? Zeynep Gökçe, Straight Talk. And now to discuss the growing popularity of Turkish TV series, joining me now from Budapest is Suay Nilhan Açıkalın. She is an associate professor at Ankara Hacı Bayram Veli University. Suay, hello and welcome to Straight Talk. So how far have uh, Turkish um, production companies come in terms of gaining global appeal? And where do you think does this uh, very specific sector stand uh, among its competitors? Hello, Aisha. Thanks for the question. Uh, well, it is the uh, long journey that has been, we can say, that considered as started 15 years ago. And through the 15 years ago, uh, the Turkish TV series companies and the, this sector has been increasing and broadening as much as uh, possible. Uh, we can say that depends on the last statistic, the Turkish companies in the TV series sector has been the uh, third biggest sector in the world, which uh, basically followed by, uh, followed American and the British sector. And this last 15 years can be considered as a basically uh, successfully peaking. It is the point that right now we are discussing. And this sector also kindly expanding from it is the sector which including the not only one types or one style of the TV series, but it has more diverse uh, mm -hmm. types of the TV series like the historic or the drama compared to the when it starts 15 years ago. So, but could you talk to us about the growth uh, strategy of Turkish production companies? I mean, how did they tap so many markets so fast as you've just mentioned? 
Uh, well, the PR strategy, some of the companies, of course, uh, different, but most of them has the similarities that, that some types of the TV series has been chosen by the, some specific countries. For example, in the beginning of the, uh, this sector, 15 years ago, we saw mostly the companies focusing on the Middle East and the Balkan region, mostly uh, with the drama series, much more modern stories, love stories, that kind of uh, styles. But some of the countries directly choose the historical Turkish TV series, like the Latin American countries, for example, loves the uh, more Ottoman style or more uh, earlier Turkish uh, style drama series. So in this respect, companies developed a strategy tailor-based towards the each country, mm -hmm. and it created an important zone to bring in the new TV series that after the broadcasting in Turkey as well. And also uh, for uh, later years, within the five or 10 years, uh, it created a kind of a important zone for the old Turkish companies that bringing up the new styles to the all different countries. And it basically created mostly which one is the most popular in that country. They bringing the new same style to those countries as well. So could you talk to us about the uh, cultural and societal factors that impact the uh, popularity of Turkish dramas among many uh, different audiences, as you've just mentioned, for example, Latin America? Well, I think the biggest uh, influence in this respect, as you said, in both social and the cultural level, because uh, most of the people started to learn, for example, Turkish after they watching the, these TV series. And if you travel those countries, you see that when you are saying I'm Turkish, those people approaching you with the Turkish words or Turkish verbs to you, uh, they are learning from these TV series. And of course, the learning the language of Turkish, it created a kind of a positive bond between the two cultures or the two societies. And it also directly reflects to the tourism sector as well. Because, uh, mm -hmm. for example, if the uh, Arab countries generally prefer the, as I said, the drama style Turkish TV series, it created a very huge rush to Turkey, but not only to Istanbul, but also in an inner Anatolian cities as well. And I think it's also very important. And the last things, of course, uh, when they visited to Turkey, it also created important domino effect in the gastro diplomacy mm. uh, sector as well, because these TV series also uh, including the different parts of the Turkish culture, which uh, fascinately uh, expressing in the TV series. And it, uh, lots of the books or the new uh, other video created for the Turkish cuisine that learned in the, these TV series as well. So um, how have online platforms made uh, Turkish uh, series more accessible and um, popular to global audiences? Of course, uh, these digital platforms make it more uh, mobilizing the TV series for Turkey. Uh, because it created a basically much more easy way to watch the TV series. Be because a few years ago, the people can only watch the uh, Turkish TV series on their home. But right now, it can be uh, taken with their phone to everywhere. So it's much more increased the number of watched of these the TV series. And also, it created opportunity for Turkish TV series to basically reach the all groups of the society. So now that the uh, Turkish television industry has witnessed a staggering uh, surge of 148% in demand in just the last three years, so what does this tell us about its future? And do you think this trend is sustainable? Uh, well, it's not easy question, uh, but it's obvious that there are sometimes ups and downs in this sector, but last three years, especially with the support of also uh, the Turkish people and the Turkish government uh, created a lot of positive impact on this sector. But I can say if you want to have more sustainable, it brings new uh, stakeholders to this issue, like the, uh, the uh, famous people playing a key role to make promote their TV series as well. But I think I at least uh, for specifically some regions, this sector seems to be more sustainable. But of course, the newly recognized regions should need to be more tailor-based strategy as well. So uh, top three importance of uh, Turkey's series were uh, Spain, Saudi Arabia and Egypt. What does this tell us about the demographics? Uh, it's an interesting uh, point because 
the Spain uh, and those other countries have also cultural similarities with Turkey. But I think it's also uh, shows that the, sometimes the political relations with these countries affected that, that how their societies approach to Turkish TV series as well. And I think it's not surprising that these three countries have a, a very high interest to Turkish TV series because especially the historicals and the drama uh, tur TV series has that some commonality in their daily life or in their history as well. So, um, Shuai, in the last decade, how popular have Turkish actors grown and how are they contributing to the sector globally? Well, this is the point I tried to mention because these, the Turkish TV series sector is growing is also uh, with the support of the uh, celebrities. And there is a, uh, you know, the very famous notion of the celebrity diplomacy as well. Uh, our celebrities which played in these the, uh, TV series has been traveling within these countries in their uh, fairs, in their other events as well. And I think it's also created a positive impact on the growing of this sector because most of the people following those the actors both on their social platforms and watching the, which uh, TV series they are playing, they also demand to watch in their TV channels or in their digital platforms as well. All right, Shuai, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk. Thank you.